everyone welcome to another episode on it's a learning life for real i'm tamika and today we're talking about how you can get unstuck before we get started remember to hit like and subscribe so you never miss a video whenever i upload one here on it's a learning life for real i use my experiences as a learning and organizational development professional to share insights and tips that you can use to grow and develop personally and professionally so today i want to talk to you about how to get unstuck primarily through the lens of this book out of the maze by spencer johnson so out of the maze is actually the sequel to who moved my cheese and if you have not yet seen the video I did about dealing with change, you want to check it out. So what do we mean when we talk about being stuck? At some point or another, you might have been, whether it's in your personal or professional life, faced with a difficult situation or just been in a position where you know something wasn't quite right and you know that something needed to change. And even though you had that worrisome or unsettled feeling that something needed to change and something wasn't quite right, you weren't able to figure out the what or the how, and in some instance, even the why. And because of that, you languished in that difficult situation, not being able to move forward, but still not being happy with how things are. And you just basically felt stuck. Having established what we're talking about when we talk about being stuck, the question for you is where, which area or where in your life do you currently feel stuck? So as we talk about how to get unstuck, I'm going to be sharing with you lessons and insights from the book Out of the Maze, which is a sequel to Who Moved My Cheese. So in Who Moved My Cheese, we see how all four characters responded to change. We see Sniff and Scurry without any kind of delay jumping out into the maze to go find new cheese. And we see the two little people, him and Ha, being very upset and angry about the disappearance of their cheese. And they're trying to figure out who took their cheese and just being angry about their situation. Eventually, Ha, realizing that the cheese wasn't coming back, said to his friend, him, let's go back into the maze. But Hem is unable to move forward because he feels entitled to his cheese and he's scared of moving forward. So eventually his friend Ha leaves him and goes back out into the maze. And that wraps up with us learning that Sniff, Scurry and Ha all move forward and are able to find new cheese and are pretty much living their best life ever. ever. But what happened to him in out of the maze, we finally learn what happened to him because him was left behind at cheese station C because he could not move forward because he was stuck. So out of the maze picks up with him being at cheese station C in a cheeseless situation. His situation is desperate because uh, he keeps waiting for the cheese to come back and he's angry that his friend left him. He is getting tired and hungrier by the day. And though all indications tells him that he needs to do something, he is paralyzed by fear of going back out into the maze to go find new cheese. And also, uh, he is stuck with the thoughts and beliefs he had about the fact that he wanted back his old cheese and he wanted things to go back. The, to, to how they were of course he goes out into the maze though he's fearful of the maze and he thinks that the, the maze is, is a dangerous place to be uh he struggles for the first couple of days to find cheese and he can't find any in any case uh while he's out there in the maze searching for cheese he wakes up one day really really uh desperate and hungry and he noticed that there's another person in the maze with him, a stranger near Hope, named Hope. So seeing that he was really hungry and desperate looking, Hope had some apples and she offered him one of her apples. But Hem looked at the apples. He had never seen apples before. And to him, they look like shiny rocks. And she offers him, she offers him, Hope offers him the apple for him to eat because he looked desperate and hungry and he takes it and he looks at it and he says to her no 
I can't eat it. I don't know what it is. So even though he's hungry and he is in a desperate situation, he is reluctant and or afraid to try the apple that the stranger is offering him. But realizing that he was getting weaker and weaker and weaker, he eventually takes the apple, smells it, sees that it smells sweet and decides to bite in. And when he bites into the apple, he finds out that it's sweet and it's juicy and he likes it. And before you know it, he eats three apples and he begins to feel better. And of course, uh, he explains to the stranger that he had never had apple before and he's basically searching for new cheese. So he resumes his search for cheese along with the stranger, Hope, who is searching for apples because she's never had cheese before and he's never had apples before. So he's looking for cheese, she's looking for apples. But he was first initially reluctant to eat the apple though he was desperate because in his head, he was just stuck on finding new cheese. After some time in the maze, they stumble upon bits and pieces of cheese and bits and pieces of apples. So they continue their search in the maze and over time, uh, they find new apple and cheese. And when they discover the new ha the apple and cheese, uh, him comes to realize that there is more to life than just cheese and that in fact he didn't have to choose uh to just rely on cheese he actually liked apples so at the end of the story we find out that they both discover uh new cheese and new apples and they live happily ever after hem comes to realize that his beliefs and thoughts about what could sustain and nourish him aka cheese prevented him from trying things that were new for stepping out and he, as we move through the book, we see where he goes through a process of challenging his old beliefs and making accommodations for and opening himself up to new possibilities where he could find nourishment, sustenance and happiness in not just cheese, but also in apples. So that's just a quick summary of Out of the Maze. The main point of the book, Out of the Maze, is that our beliefs are powerful. Our beliefs can keep us stuck. They can limit our ability to move forward. They can keep us stuck in cycles and patterns that do not help or serve us and or prevent us from moving forward. So 2,000 years later. At this point, I'm going to share with you six tips from Out of the Maze that you can use to help you get out of whatever difficult situation that you might be uh, faced with in your personal or professional life. First insight that you can use to get unstuck or to get out of the maze is to notice your beliefs. What do we mean when we say notice your beliefs? Before it is that you can tackle and or change your beliefs, you first have to notice your beliefs. And a belief is a thought you trust to be true. But not all of our beliefs, our thoughts are true. We might believe something about a particular situation or a particular person, and it may not be true. But that belief, that thought that you trust, drives your actions and drives your interactions with the people, things, and uh, the environment in which you operate. So the first thing you want to do in noticing your belief is you want to look at what it is that you believe to be true and you want to question whether or not some of those things really are true because if you don't question those beliefs those beliefs that are not true can actually keep you stuck in cycles second insight from out of the maze is don't believe everything you think so sometimes the facts the facts as you call them are just the facts according to you the facts according to tamika and what you consider the facts might be limited to the information you have, the experiences you've had, the exposures that you've had. And in some instances, you may not have full information. You may not be sufficiently informed of all the different things that are happening. So the facts are only according to you. Consider that there might be a perspective outside of your own that you probably aren't thinking of. 
sometimes we make up stories in our heads about what we think is happening and we, we ascribe motives to the actions of other people and if you ever stop to ask them what was happening with them in the instance that there's even a communication breakdown you may find that their explanation could reveal that you were totally wrong about what you thought was happening so again do not believe everything you think so the third tip that you can use to get out of the maze and to get unstuck is to let go of what isn't working so what do we mean by that you can't take old baggage on your new journey as you launch out onto your new journey you have to take stock of where you are you have to take stock of your relationships you have to take stock of your habits and patterns and you have to figure out what do you need to let go of what is not going to serve me in the next season and the reason you're gonna have to do this is it's like einstein says you can't keep doing the same thing over and over and over and expect the different results you just can't so at some point you are going to have to get brutally honest with yourself you are going to have to confront what your patterns are what your thoughts and beliefs are and you're going to have to uh, turn the mirror inward and ask yourself some tough questions as it is that you do that stop taking for yourself to find out what your patterns are then you're going to be able to decide you know what I'm no longer going to behave in these ways and this is how I'm going to set boundaries and this is how I'm going to change my habits and my patterns. But you first have to decide that you are going to let go of what doesn't serve you. And the fourth tip is to look outside of the maze. So looking outside of the maze could refer to out of the box thinking if it is that you have had only one particular approach to solving problems or dealing with the difficult situations in your life maybe it's time to consider another approach consider the unlikely and you want to explore the impossible so what new ways of operating could you adapt what other way could you be looking at the situation than the one that you're currently using so the fifth tip that you can use to get out of your maze and to get unstuck is to choose a new belief changing what you think doesn't change who you are you get to change your mind about things and people and situations but sometimes we hang on to beliefs and behaviors and patterns because they're popular or because they're familiar and we sometimes feel as if if we change our mind people are going to judge us a particular way and one of the reasons one of the ways that people do this i have seen this in a lot of instances where say for instance you're an entertainer and you decide that you are going to uh, no longer be an entertainer and you're going to choose a new career path. In some instances, people question what you're doing, the new thing you're doing, because in their head, you're supposed to be a particular thing or a particular person or they have expectations that they project on you. And the truth of the matter is you have you reserve the right to change your mind. So the sixth and final tip to help you get out of the maze and get unstuck is to recognize that there are no limits to what you can believe, what you can do, what you can enjoy, and what you can experience. There are really no limits on that. The limits are really up to you. If you believe that your world is this small, your world is going to be that small. If you believe the world is full of possibilities and potentials for you to grow and improve and be excellent, the world is going to be just as you imagine it. In fact, when I was reading the book Out of, May, Out of the Maze, they spoke about the fact that our beliefs are so powerful. The people who made the Titanic, they literally said that the Titanic couldn't sink so because they believed that, that they treated the, 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 their belief that the Titanic couldn't sink as a fact, then because of that, they didn't pack enough life rafts on the ship itself. And of course, when the ship went down, there were not enough life rafts for people. So again, we see how our beliefs drive our actions. And when it is that those beliefs that we have that we think are true actually aren't, they come at a cost to other people and so on and so forth. So if, if you want to get on stuff, you have to you have to tackle your belief systems. You have to be brave enough 
to question what you believe and you have to be brave enough to choose to change your mind and to believe new things, to lean into learning, to explore possibilities, to expose yourself to ideas that challenge your own and even people who challenge your own. And in that process of learning and unlearning and relearning, you will discover that there are a lot of possibilities out there for you to become a better version of yourself, for you to push past. So I do hope that having watched this video that you would have gotten an insight or two as to how it is that you might move out of your maze and get unstuck. Thank you for watching another episode of It's a Learning Life for Real. Remember to like, subscribe and leave me a comment so I can know how you're liking the videos and or whatever topic you want me to discuss next. Bye-bye.